Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to review Stefan Quiller watercolor. I'm going to swatch out these eight new colors that I have just bought to let you see the quality for yourself. And also I want to talk about the quality. So these are eight new colors that I have bought to add to my very limited selection of colors that I already have, that I have been using so far. The price for each 15 ml tube is around US 12 to 16 dollars. I bought mine during a discount. Now these are not as widely available compared to other brands like Daniel Smith, Winston Newton, Schmincker. They can only be found at very selected online stores. Amazon is one of them, but even for Amazon, they have a very limited selection of colors. The other place to get them would be Stephen Quiller's website, which I will link in the video description below. Each watercolor tube is individually packaged like this. They are actually imported and distributed by Jack Richardson. On the back, we have some information regarding the pigment that is used, light fast quality, whether or not the paint is transparent or staining, and there is also this very useful info about the complementary color. All that information is also repeated on the label on the tube. So here you may notice that there is no info on the transparency. So if there is no mention, that means this is not transparent. If the colors are transparent, they will be labeled. And these paints, they are made in Belgium. According to Stefan Quiller's website, this line of watercolor is imported by Jack Richardson but it's not made by them, it's made by an European company that has been making paint since 1860s. There's no name mentioned. So the pigment is grounded with stone mills and mixed with gum arabic and honey. There aren't many paint manufacturers in Belgium. The one that fits the description is Blocks that's founded in 1865. I wasn't able to find any information online that confirms that this is the company that makes the paint, but who else can it be from Belgium? Before I swatch out the new colors, I just want to show you a sketch that I have painted with Stefan Quiller's watercolor. So I will be talking about the colors that I have used and also the new colors that I'm about to swatch out in this video. The first color we have here is Cadmium Yellow Light PY35. This is supposed to be an opaque color. Cadmium colors are opaque colors. This looks like a cool yellow, a very bright, vibrant cool yellow. Next we have Vermilion PO73. This is a very intense orange. It's supposed to be transparent and it does look like it is so. It's very reddish orange. And this is Crinocridon Rose PV19. This is a nice vibrant version of this color. So far for these three colors, the pigment load seems to be quite high. And this is Ultramarine Violet PV15. This also looks quite intense. This is Richardson Blue, which is Thalo Blue PB15. And this is Ultramarine Blue Deep. Now these eight new colors that I just bought, they are not as fluid compared to the colors I already have. Some of the colors that I have bought a few weeks ago, they were really very fluid, as in you can squeeze a bit and the paint will flow out very easily. But not for this batch of new colors, strangely. While talking about fluid paint, the next color is very fluid. This is Richardson Green. So I can press the tube very slightly, see how the paint moves. This particular tube has some air in it. So after I squeezed out the air, this is how much paint it's left with. Just to show you how fluid the watercolor can be, let me squeeze out some Richardson Green into this pan. 
see how how the paint flows once it's in the pan it would spread itself out so easily anyway i'm going to leave this out to dry and see how much the paint will shrink this is very fluid if i were to tilt the pan slightly the paint is going to flow out i have overfilled the pan on purpose because i want to show you how much the paint will shrink after a few days of drying this is how the pan looks after a few days of drying you can see the surface it has sunk in now well, the surface is dry to the touch but it can still be reactivated with water very easily when dealing with very fluid paint be careful not to press too hard or the paint may flow out too fast so this is a very intense very vibrant version of thalo green pg7 next color we have burnt sienna and it seems like this tube has quite a bit of air in it as well i'm currently squeezing the tube and no paint is coming out yet all right you can see a little bubble there and there we have the paint so this is how much air is in the tube this version of burnt sienna uses pbr7 now this burnt sienna appears to be a bit washed out it's quite light very transparent though the colors have dried they look beautiful they look very vibrant using wet on wet i was able to get very smooth gradations this is very nice let me show you some more swatches of other colors that i have painted the three colors i have here are venetian red pr102 hookers green pbr7 pg7 and transparent yellow medium py154 these are very vibrant colors now i want to talk about venetian red the tube that i have it has too much binder after squeezing out the binder i'm left with only half a tube of paint so you can see how much paint i have left here so this swatch this was created with the concentrated pigment after squeezing out the binder this version of focus green it's very nice and py154 this is a very nice yellow i really love this uh, pigment but this is a very expensive pigment next we have quinacridone magenta pr122 quinacridone red pr202 and Richardson Pyro Red Light PR255 so these are also very vibrant these are very nice and lastly we have Cobalt Blue PB28 and Cobalt Blue Deep PB74 now just for comparison purposes let me show you the Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue so there is a visible difference between the Daniel Smith version and the Stephen Quiller version this looks more like cerulean or phthalo this is more like ultramarine in terms of the color the hue and let me show you Cobalt Blue Deep and Cobalt Blue Light from Schmincker Schmincker's PB28 looks very similar to Daniel Smith's version. Stephen Quiller's Cobalt Blue Deep is a bit unusual. Now PB74, it's a very heavily granulating pigment. You are supposed to see a lot of texture, but for Stephen Quiller's version, the texture is not as intense compared to other brands. The texture from Stephen Quiller's version, it's very fine and from Schmincker's version you can see it's more obvious the quality of the paint i would say it's quite good the colors they are very vibrant and i like the fact that they have included the complementary color on the tube so now i'm going to test the complementary mix here i have cadmium yellow light this is supposed to be the complementary color for ultramarine violet which is on the right side 
So these two colors, they are going to neutralize each other. So when we have more yellow, it looks green like this. Let's see what happens when we have more ultramarine violet. So it's this very neutralized color that you can use as a gray wash, a neutralized gray wash. This is kind of nice. The complementary color, however, it's not listed on the color chart. So if you want to buy one color and you want to buy the complementary color, there's no way to find out what's the exact complementary color. Anyway, I'm going to list out all the complementary colors for all the tubes that I have on my website. I'll put a link in the video description below. I don't have all the colors, of course. To conclude, these are high quality watercolor paint. I'm satisfied with the quality, but the quality control is questionable. Some of the tubes, they have air in them. Some of the tubes, they have too much binder. The binder separation issue usually happens with selected colors that have heavy pigments like Venetian red, cerulean, cobalt. Uh, those are the colors that usually have binder separation issue, which is not unexpected, but the amount of binder that comes out from the tube, well, that is unexpected. Some of the paint are very fluid. I suspect they have a lot more binder compared to other brands, but not like excessive binder for those selected colors. So for those very fluid paint, it's best to use them straight from the tubes. If you want to squeeze them into pans like this, the paint is going to shrink by quite a lot. So it would take several pouring sessions to actually fill up a pan. There aren't many reviews for this brand online, so that's why I wanted to share my thoughts with you. If you happen to be using Stefan Quiller watercolor, I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you think about this brand. All right, thanks for watching this video. I hope this is somewhat informative. See you in the next video. Bye. Oh, hey, you're still around. I just want to let you know that I am selling off some of my excess watercolor paint to make space to get more colors to test and also to make more videos like this. So if you are interested to help me out, you can check out the colors that I am selling from the link in the video description below. All right, see ya.